In 2023, I had varied success with my habit building. Some months it went super well and other months absolutely not. So in 2024, I'm changing the way that I approach my habits to make them easier to do and hopefully make more progress. This is gonna be a mix of things that I'm doing for my trackers versus the things I'm actually doing for the habits. But the first change that I'm gonna be making is tracking less habits. Throughout 2023, the actual number of habits I tracked on any given month did change, but some months we were getting up to like 12 or 13 habits tracked. And honestly, that's just too many for me. I know some people can do that and that's totally fine. And previously I've been able to do that too, which is why this year I thought it would be okay as well. But I found that having that many habits to track made my tracker more overwhelming to use and thus I was less likely to actually get in and use it. When you're supposed to be using a habit tracker to kind of hold you accountable to your habit completion, it's not super great if you're not inclined to use it. So what I'm gonna be doing for next year is cutting down the number of habits I'm tracking on each of my trackers. As I mentioned before, I tracked a lot of habits in 2023 and a lot of the ones I put on my trackers were ones that were kind of already established habits and I just wanted to make sure I was actually still doing them or stuff that I honestly didn't really care if it didn't happen. This meant that the things that were valuable to me and were habits I was trying to build were mixed in amongst all these other things. In my last journal for this year though, I had two habits in particular that I separated out into their own trackers. And I found that the completion of those ones was a lot better than pretty much anything that I was tracking on those combined ones. For that reason, the second thing that I'm going to be changing is having separate trackers for things that I wanna focus on. I don't wanna have too many things that I'm focusing on because that just leads to not focusing on anything. But having those ones set aside in their own special trackers means that I have all the data for those in the same place, which will be helpful. And thus I can establish a better idea of how well I'm going with working on that habit. This also very much relates to my third point in that I'm not going to be doing monthly trackers anymore. I mean, I'm not doing monthly planning in general, so that's kind of obvious. But what I'm gonna be doing instead is putting those habit trackers on my fortnightly schedules. So for most people, this would be like putting it on their weekly log, just because then it's front and center and I will actually see it when I turn to make my plans for any given week, fortnight, day, that kind of thing. Oftentimes with habit trackers in monthly setups, the reason that people don't use them is because they don't turn back to them. And it's because it's not in amongst all of the stuff they use on a day-to-day -day basis. Having those trackers in the place that I'm already gonna be working means that I'm more likely to see them, notice them, and then use them. A tactic that I started using this year that has been so super helpful in actually getting me to do my habits is the high bar, low bar system. The general idea with this one is that you set a high bar and a low bar for the completion of the habit, where the low bar is something laughably easy. So super easy, so super entry level that if you didn't do it, you might feel a little bit silly. And while the point is not to make ourselves feel silly, the point is kind to give ourselves an easy entry to completing the habit. The high bar is effectively what you would like the habit to be. So for instance, let's say it's water intake, and let's just say that you really wanna be drinking two liters of water a day. For me, that is way too much, but let's say that that's your goal. So two liters of water would be your high bar, but your low bar is that super low entry level thing that you can do to get some water into your body. For me, that'd be something like a sip of water because like surely I could get a sip of water in each day. Some days I don't, that's not necessarily the point, but I'm giving myself that super easy way to hit this habit. Also, the way that I like to see it is giving yourself partial credit. Sometimes for some of the habits that we're tracking, we just do not realistically hit that high bar the majority of the time. But that doesn't mean that we don't do something towards the habit. The low bar lets us color in the tracker with something so that we say, hey, look, you did a bit of it and that's okay. Honestly though, my habit completion has like skyrocketed from using this, so I'ma keep doing it. The fifth thing relates to what goes on in my mind when I'm filling in my tracker. Oftentimes towards the end of the day, when I'm ticking things off and recording what I did, I'll get to my habit tracker and I'll start to look through the ones that haven't been done. These are the problem areas in particular. I have to consider, am I actually gonna finish this before the end of the day, is it gonna happen? Or should I just cross it off and say that it didn't happen? Anytime that I think that though, what I've been trying out and has been proving useful is ticking off the habit as completed and then just go and doing the habit. It kind of tricks my mind into thinking, hey, you want this habit tracker to actually be accurate. So if you've checked it off to say it's done, you better go make sure it gets done. This is in particular quite good for those very small habits that you can realistically do at any time of the day. 
because often when I'm filling in my habit tracker, it is like the last thing of the day. So if it's that water intake one and I need to go get my sip of water and I haven't done it yet, I can tick it off and say, oh look, it says you got your sip of water, you best go do that. As said, it's not gonna work for all habits and I mean, take all of these ideas with a grain of salt. This is just what I'm trying. The next change that I wanna make is less about the tracking of the habits and more about how I'm going to approach them. And that's environmental design. A lot of the time our habits are very closely linked to our environment. The things that are easiest to reach for, easiest to do, are the things that get done the most. This is something that I've been really conscious with when it comes to certain areas of my life. For instance, content creating, where I've got you know, my camera set up here and it's very easy to just start filming. In fact, that's what I did today. I got the urge to start filming and I'm like, eh, it doesn't matter that my hair's wet, let's just go for it. But when it comes to my other habits that I'm trying to build, my environment doesn't necessarily help. And I would like to get more intentional about making sure that it does. For instance, this could be something like making sure that my water bottle is easily accessible at all times if I want to drink more water. If you're learning an instrument and you want to do more practice, it's making sure that that instrument is easily accessible when you get the urge to do the practice. If you get the urge to do the practice, but then it's going to take you five minutes to set up actually being able to do the practice, you're less inclined to actually do it. The environmental design for certain habits is going to look different, obviously, but we want to make sure that the cue for the habit or the thing that kind of prompts you to do it or triggers you to do it is really obvious and noticeable so that then when you see it you go up oh. It's habit time, even if subconsciously. The seventh change that I want to make, or at least get more intentional about, is a thing called habit stacking. And this is the idea of taking a habit that you want to develop and attaching it or chaining it to something that's already an established habit. So for example, let's just say that, like me, the first thing you do in the morning is roll over and open up your phone. Yes, I know people say that that's not good, but Come on, it happens. Maybe if there's another habit that you're trying to build in your morning routine that you could stack with that one, it would be a pretty good one to attach it to especially if it's something you do pretty much each and every morning already. So for instance, that could be something like writing down a line of journaling about something you're grateful for, having a sip of water if that water intake one is one of your goals, or really anything else that seems reasonable given the time and place that you're doing it. The biggest thing that I am trying to do though when it comes to my habits and habit building is that when I get the urge to do something, particularly something that's positive, I just go and do the thing. You know, within reason, obviously, like if you're in the middle of something and if you just drop everything and leave, it's gonna be like a hazard, then maybe not. But I find this is particularly important for any of those kind of regular adulting, executive functioning, taking care of myself things. Oftentimes I get the urge to do something and then I talk myself out of doing it. It's like, if you get the urge to floss your teeth, just floss your teeth. Why are you talking yourself out of doing something that you know is good for you? I am talking to myself here, but why are you talking yourself out of doing something that's good for you? I say that with love. Those are the things that I'm trying next year for better completion and tracking of my habits, but I'd love to hear about what you're trying. Let me know in the comments below, but if you are looking for more videos on habit building, in particular how to make habit building easier, then this one is the next one you want to check out. In that one we go through the four different stages of making a habit more likely to be completed, so click or tap on that one and I'll see you over there.